Welcome. In the last session, we have covered uh, impacts of climate change, that is ocean circulation, extreme marine weather and couple events. Now, in this session, we are going to cover the coastal ecosystem and marine ecosystem. So, if you see what is a coastal ecosystem, a uh, coastal ecosystem is generally kind of greenery and relevant habitat that we generally see along the coastline, such as uh, shark masses, uh, or uh, mangroves, seagrass, this kind of all greenery that we can see generally along the coast and relevant habitat that stay inside this all. So this entire setup we generally call the coastal ecosystem. So why to study about this coastal ecosystem and why it is important? Of course, it's very important because whatever carbon emissions that we are releasing into the atmosphere, so most of the carbon is, uh, these all coastal ecosystem store or sequester this carbon for unit area than more carbon for unit area than the terrestrial forests, right? And now uh, these are considered uh, um, uh, as a main role. Uh, these are these all coastal ecosystems like uh, mangroves, tidal marshes, whatever, uh, are considered for uh, their role in uh, mitigating climate change, right? Because they are the uh, they, they are the zones like buffer zones to absorb the carbon dioxide or store the carbon dioxide and mitigate the climate change impacts, right? And whatever carbon that is stored inside uh, uh, these uh, coastal and marine ecosystems, that kind of carbon generally we call like a blue carbon, right? And uh, saltwater in intrusion also, another, uh, this is also kind of uh, uh, process of uh, uh, movement of saline water into the freshwater aquifers. That means whenever the coastal aquifers uh, uh, as used uh, extensively by uh, human beings or uh, uh, so-called purposes. So then the seawater, uh, there will be less pressure over there. So that automatically, if you see this image, so if you see this image, earlier this is the groundwater and uh, this is the fresh water and this is salt water. So while using this uh, groundwater from the coastal aquifers extensively, thereby there will be low pressure will form. So to balance this low pressure, what will happen? The coastal water will uh, further move into the uh, coastal saline water, furtherly move into the uh, freshwater uh, aquifers. Thereby, you can see a kind of movement of salt water into the freshwater. That uh, what we call like uh, uh, salt water intrusion, right? So, and also coastal erosion. Uh, coastal erosion is nothing but a loss or a displacement of uh, land uh, from the beaches because of so-called action of uh, uh, waves, currents, tides, or some impacts of storms or sea level rise in the coast, right? So these are the main uh, means uh, come, come while covering into the, uh, while covering the fats that we are going to see in the coastal ecosystem, like this all mangroves, tidal mussels, sea grass, coastline and uh, salt water intrusion, this kind of concepts, right? So if you see what kind of effort impacts that we are going to see because of this, uh, when the coastal ecosystem got damaged, right? Of course, the ongoing destruction and loss of this ecosystem contribution to contributes to additional human induced greenhouse gases. Means, uh, whenever we uh, destruct uh, this coastal system for uh, our man-made or other purposes, then uh, of course we are going to pay. Uh, we are going to again get some human induced greenhouse gases because there are no sinks for the absorption of a, uh, more excess uh, carbon that we release into the atmosphere. Thereby, we get we get again further warming. Right, so that how how good this uh, uh, in uh, carbon storage, how good uh, this coastal ecosystem in carbon storage. If you want to see, if you see this number, this is a global carbon that is uh, 83 percent, and uh, the overall the uh, coverage of this coastal area, I mean coastal ecosystem, like uh, the kind of uh, mangroves, tidal masses, seagrass coverage. And the whole ocean area that is a two percent only but however the coverage however the coverage of this coastal ecosystem is very less comparatively two percent but out of 83 percent 50 percent of the carbon is going to store by this coastal ecosystem so you can understand how much important uh, to i mean uh, to not to dextrate or to restore or to protect this all coastal ecosystem uh, while doing the great job that is uh, storing the carbon, whatever excess carbon that we release into the atmosphere, right? Of course, uh, on, a, on a kind of uh, island, Apo Island, as a earlier in 1976, a researcher from uh, Siliman University Marine Laboratory noticed that 
at around uh, apo island fish stocks were declined and coral reefs were damaged this kind of some uh, this is just for uh, make you to understand like how coastal ecosystems are going to be damaged because of so called activities or global climate change and all so additionally these ecosystems provide not only this carbon storage uh, purpose but also some numeric numerous benefits and services that are essential for climate change adaptation including coastal protection of, of course uh, they absorb a lot of waves and wave energy or water energy when the huge waves tides or sea level or floods come and they protect the uh, coast and uh, also uh, food security for many uh, communities globally right so the risk of the coastal flooding erosion include of course as i said like coastal flooding when the uh, uh, coast flood flood uh, by the severe uh, rainfall or sea level like that so you can probably see the erosion uh, uh, aspect so erosion aspect include the property damage and the degradation of plant animal habitats and loss of the land because of all the erosion because of this erosion we can see all this kind of damage right infrastructure damage or uh, the removal of all plants uh, marine habitat everything loss of land and all right so if you can see some uh, flooding record uh, average number of the flooded days for year from the uh, you can see from this uh, how 1950 to 1959 and 2011 to 2020 how you can see uh, the number san francisco at, at san francisco fort san los angeles different different places how this number has been increased if you can see the average number of flooded days for a year that blue the orange one is in the from 1950 to 1959 so this kind of some records that you can see so that you can understand flooding how is going to be affect the coastal and coast and coastal ecosystems right and sea water intrusion of course as i said like before uh, there are the various studies of the sea water intrusion in major places like coastal parts of uh, batina plain oman a coast like for saf kach uh, district gujarat uh, tamil nadu and uh, florida united states there are many studies like this of course what kind of remedies that we have to take uh, to pre- uh, prevent this impacts of climate change what kind of mitigation uh, strategies that we have to follow like of course we have to first and first and foremost uh, protect this coastal ecosystem and ne- they, they need to be conserved right Uh, because they are as i said like before there's the major and significant carbon sinks right of course because of the via after as i said like before example of island so almost 10 years later in the 19 august 1994 by doing this process like marine uh, protection of the marine areas marine protected areas like this like coastal ecosystems apo island was declared as a protected landscape or land, seascape under the national integrated protected area system nibas and the national government assumed that the leading management role in a established protected areas management board so after doing this such a practice it became again more later again after 10 years it became like this apo island became like a marine protected area right so this kind of uh, remedials that we have to follow or mitigation that we have to follow to protect or to restore this marine coastal or uh, coastal ecosystems and all of course as i said like a blue carbon ecosystem you can understand how very i mean how significant in controlling this climate change i mean in mitigating this climate change consequences while storing the carbon uh, that is excessively released into the atmosphere right if you understand, if you see it's not only prevent the climate change they also protect coastal communities as i said like before right and some of the ocean based climate action can play major role in reducing the world's carbon footprint delivering up to 21% of uh, annual greenhouse gas emissions cut as uh, pledged by this uh, paris agreement and all so these are some of the uh, uh, remedials or mitigation strategies that we have to take care uh, that we have to follow uh, while uh, uh, facing the impacts of this uh, climate change especially in the coastal ecosystem related right so you can understand how carbon storage is going to be uh, from various various uh, things like a uh, boreal forest or tropical forest seagrass salt marsh mangroves if you see the mangroves is a very huge uh, around 900 uh, milligrams of carbon dioxide per hectare so that you can understand how important it is while storing both uh, carbon and as well as a uh, biomass and coming to the ecosystem marine ecosystem 
marine ecosystems are nothing but the kind of species or kind of plants animal animals and uh, biodiversity what kind of how the biodiversity and how the abundance of all marine species and all not only in the coast but also the whole ocean but if you see but now these days that marine species uh, are going to affect by these uh, greenhouse gas emissions and climate change and all right some response such as such such, such responses include like a change in the marine species that what we call like a marine species migration right that uh, a polar and deep uh, uh, species distribution a decrease in calcification abundance, abundance of the warm water species and uh, uh, a damage uh, to the entire ecosystem like a coral reefs these are some kind of uh, responses of this marine ecosystem due to this climate change and all like excessive warming ocean warming and all right so and this also changes the uh, calcification demography abundance distribution of distribution and phenology everything is going to be changed in the entire ecosystem and uh, its functionality right so and uh, another important that important thing that invasive creation of the invasive uh, alien species invasive alien species or animals or plants or other organisms invasive means non native non native that are introduced in the areas outside their natural range because of this so called uh, uh, climate change impacts right and also this invasive species uh, creation has a negative impact on local biodiversity ecosystem services or human well being as well that we can see if you see in this image these are some um, uh, marine species migrations like uh, different different places european eel kemp ridley sea turtle some of the different uh, different different marine species uh, how they are going to migrate from one place to another place migratory movements of the iconic marine immigrants so from uh, nathan putman 2018 and all of course ias are the one of the biggest cause of uh, uh, biodiversity loss and species extinction and also the global threat to the food security right it because it also disturbs the food web right so because of the creation of the new uh, species or animals or plant that will cause impact on other existing uh, animals or plants or uh, food whatever so the, thereby you can see lot of changes in the entire ecosystem and as well as food web right so and one more study is saying that the number of established alien species will increase by 36% between 2005 and 2050 you can understand how much because of this huge impact of climate changes and all uh, how much invasion or non native species are going to be created by uh, created by 36% between 2005 and 2050 so there is a very big number so these are the some um, uh, Uh, details of the invasive species or uh, water high hyacinth uh, it's a form of a dense covered on the surface of the freshwater bodies the population are known to be double and as little as 12 days blocking waterways limiting boat traffic and affecting fish and trade in lake victoria in east africa it can grow to such a dense distance and densities such a huge densities as if are unable to uh, leave docks so this kind of a lot of effects that we are going to see because of this creation of invasive species and all right of course uh, marine organisms uh, in all parts of the food chain are uh, shifting towards the pole uh, to stay cool right as i said like a marine species migration and all uh, we have seen some of the impacts here because of how marine ecosystem is going to affect um, in marine species migration and change in biodiversity or an abundance of marine species and all right so i mean some of the uh, species already going uh, moving further to uh, poles be, uh, to get the cold water and all so it has a significant economic consequences of course uh, changing species in spate and time uh, do not occur at, do not all occur at the same place uh, i mean same time uh, that's why you can see kind of uh, uh, changes in the uh, food web and uh, delicate lifestyles as well so preventing overfishing supporting long term monitoring programs are now more important than ever so because of these changes we have to prevent and uh, overfishing and all we have to uh, continuously monitor i mean support the programming like continuous monitoring is very important what's going on with respect to this uh, climate change impacts and all right and of course some of the black sharks migrate northward seeing cold water in the summer because the sharks spent their summers on the carolina coast I mean, in past but due to the warming of the sea water they had to travel north to long island to find enough cool water right similarly in case of species such as almond and marquel 
uh, mackerel are migrating to the new territories and uh, international corporations and need uh, is needed to ensure their prosperity i mean because they are uh, salman and mackerel they give a the lot of uh, ec ec and because they are very sig uh, ec economically they are very significant and they uh, can cause a loss to the marine communities both in all socio economic way right so we have to all protect uh, those uh, species not to migrate from their spaces right so for that we have to control our emissions and we have to try to reduce every individual has to try to uh, has to try to reduce the, uh, their role in reducing the uh, impacts of climate change and all and blue crabs of course they generally thrive in warm waters of chesapeake bay but uh, as the, as we have seen that uh, continuous warming ocean uh, increase the population without need for uh, burrow in winter right so again this uh, population boom will uh, attract some kind of a new uh, invasive species or carnivores into that water so thereby you can see some kind of change in food web and all and of course as i said like before is invasive species one of the biggest cause of biodiversity loss and special extinction species extinction sorry and also global threat to food security and livelihood and what kind of practices we have to do or mitigation strategies that we have to do to control this marine ecosystem damage and all uh, caused by this global climate change of course um, this is a one important aspect that marine protected areas mps so in this this is the image a complete picture of the marine protected areas if you can see uh, in which way there are the eight illustrated ways in which the marine protected areas can promote mitigation and adaptation to the effects of climate change in the oceans so that you can understand by promoting intact and complex ecosystems with high diversity and abundance of species we can establish this kind of marine protected areas establishing means we have to protect whatever existing marine protected areas right whatever the marine areas and all that we have to protect by thereby you can see that helps a lot in the mitigating or mitigating that or adapting to this climate change and all right and of course it is essential that uh, ias to be incorporated in the climate change policies because the creation of invasive invas alien species if we do not incorporate then we don't know what will what is going to be happen so we have to know, have, we have to know continuously uh, that how these ias are going to uh, change the, our currently existing food web and, uh, food web and all like food security this kind of uh, new uh, monitoring uh, uh, process that we have to have to uh, for the biosecurity measures to prevent the introduction of uh, uh, means we when we know only then we can prevent the introduction of this is invasive alien species to near regions as a result of uh, this climate change and all right so we have to have such kind of monitoring uh, process uh, to identify this is right to prevent them uh, not to happen and uh, to take some precautionary measures and all right and of course some of the reports that shown that high level panel of uh, uh, the sustainable ocean economy group of 14 heads of states and governments at the un secretary uh, general's climate action summit it is highlighting the relationship between the ocean and uh, climate what this report saying that the five areas of opportunities uh, to mitigate this ocean and uh, climate change and all so ocean based renewable energy ocean based transportation coastal marine ecosystem fisheries aquaculture and shifting diets and carbon storage in the seabed so these are the for some possible remedies that we have to follow while protecting the marine ecosystem because of this uh, to 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 control and to protect uh, to control the cause of this climate change and all and of course to protect the consequences uh, to protect uh, from the consequences of this uh, climate change right okay